Hey everybody, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com. If you've got a question, go to my website, DinosaurGeorge.com, and click on the Ask Dinosaur George page and send me your question. I'll do my best to answer them, but keep in mind, I receive literally thousands of questions a week, and there's just no way I can answer them all. All right, let's get into it. Douglas from Dallas, Texas says, Hey, George, what's going on? Not much, Douglas. I hope things are well with you. He says, Carnotaurus has binocular vision and horns. How would he use those advantages in a fight? And would he win? Be, and who would win between Car Carnotaurus and Nanotyrannus and Cryolophosaurus? P.S. I'm 19 and I'm studying to be a paleontologist. Uh, very proud of you, uh, Douglas. I'm very glad to hear that you're interested in becoming uh, a paleontologist. I'm glad to hear that. Okay, your first question. Um, horns, the horns on Carnotaurus are pretty interesting because they're incredibly thick. They're really, really robust. And um, that suggests that they were capable of, uh, of um, a lot of pressure. So my guess would be the advantage would be the older you are, the thicker the horns would become and therefore the harder you could hit without concern about breaking your horns. Uh, your question about binocular vision, how is that effective in a fight? Well, binocular vision is incredibly important because it helps you judge distance and depth. And those two things are incredibly important. Imagine somebody who made his living as a boxer who had eyes on the side of their head. They would not be able to judge the depth to throw a punch to be able to land on an opponent. Well, the same thing with a predator. He's got to be able to determine exactly how far away his prey is so that when he strikes, he hits his target. So those two things are incredibly important. Your question about who would win in a fight between Carnotaurus, Nanotyrannus, and Cryolophosaurus, if you mean between those three, that my answer would be Nanotyrannus because he's a lot more advanced in my opinion. Um, he's certainly got much greater jaw strength, more weaponry. I believe he would be more agile. So in my opinion, I think Nanotyrannus. Uh, all right, and, and one last thing, Douglas, again, very proud of you for being interested in becoming a paleontologist. I hope you do, and I hope one day I get to work with you. All right, Lauren from San Antonio, Texas. What does dinosaur mean? Well, Lauren, uh, the word dinosaur uh, is actually a Greek word. You see, when, uh, I mean Latin, when, uh, when paleontology first began, the most common language used by scientists all over the world was Latin. And so they decided to use that language so that more people could understand what they're saying. In Latin, the word dino means terrible, and saurus means lizard. So in English, his name means terrible lizard. Now, uh, they got that name because original paleontologists thought that dinosaurs were just giant lizards. That's why the word saurus is used. But uh, the latest discovery suggests that they're not really that closely related to lizards. They're kind of more their own animal. They have uh, lizard-like qualities. They have a relationship with lizards, but they also have a relationship with modern day birds. All right, Adam from Brisbane, Australia. Hey, DG, how's it going, man? I've got a question. Well, Adam, it's going great, man. I hope you're doing well. Uh, he said, if humans lived back 65 million years ago, and there was no asteroid coming to doom the planet, would humans thrive and still take over the world? Or would they be driven to extinction? Thanks for answering my questions, DG. You are the bomb. 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 Run! <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I, uh, thank you very much for the compliment, Adam. I think you are the bomb. I think you're supposed to spell it the bomb. God, I'm so hip. It's incredible. I'm so cool. <laughs> okay. Uh, boy, speculating on something like that is very difficult, but here's my opinion. If humans lived with the with dinosaurs, uh, I don't think we would have stood much of a chance because they're just too vicious, too nasty. Certainly, if we had our large brains, it would help us figure out ways to live with them. But I don't know. That would be a very tough one because when you're looking at the sheer enormity of those animals and the, the predators, my gosh, some of them were so advanced as far as their capabilities. I just don't think we would have stood a chance, Adam. I just don't think it's possible that we could have survived with them. But who knows? I mean, I don't know. You look at uh, early humans living in Africa, there were some nasty animals with them, some of the big elephants and the giant bears and the saber-toothed cats, well, not just Africa, but worldwide. Um, they figured out a way to survive, so maybe I'm not giving us enough, uh, enough credit. Maybe, uh, maybe we would have figured out a way. I don't know. Interesting question. All right, Abinab from Omaha, Nebraska. Hello, Mr. Blasting. How are you doing? Abinab, I'm doing great. My friend, you can always call me George or Dinosaur George or DG, but I really appreciate the respect 
it, it uh, speaks very highly of who you are, and I appreciate that. I wanted to ask, was Truodon an omnivore? Truodon is my favorite dinosaur, and I've heard about a study that says it may have been omnivorous. What do you think? Well, let me tell you, man, I've seen the teeth of Truodon, and those are the most wicked-looking predator teeth on the planet. Uh, they are cruel-looking. Uh, in fact, does Truodon mean two tooth or something like that? I don't remember. It's something like that. I think Truodon means two tooth or something to do with his teeth because the word Don means tooth in, in uh, Latin. But um, those teeth are incredible. But you know, on one side, the serrations are considerably different than the other side. And that does suggest the ability to use those more as a way to grind up vegetation. So yes, it is certainly possible, but my best guess would be Truodon, if it was an omnivore, I think it was more predatory in nature and would simply um, eat plants as a way to either uh, give it something in its nutrition that it wasn't getting from meat or as a way to maybe get it through hard times. But looking at that little dinosaur, he sure appears to me to be more of a predator than an omnivore, but it's certainly possible. All right, finally, Brandon from Becker, Minnesota says, hey DG, big fan of yours. I wanna ask you two questions since I'm new. Brandon, welcome to the uh, group. Uh, thank you very much for the compliment and I'm gonna let you ask your two questions. Question number one, since Suchomimus and Spinosaurus lived in the same time periods, who would win in a fight? Wow. Wow, uh, great question. I think Spinosaurus would be way too much for Suchomimus. Now, Suchomimus is a pretty big guy, but his skull is even more elongated and thin comparative to Spinosaurus. And those elongated snouts, in my opinion, are not really efficient as being weapons of mass destruction. I think they're, they're certainly very effective in uh, ripping huge chunks out of you, but I don't think they have a lot of lateral strength. That is, they're not very strong from side to side, and in a fight, your head is being jerked around and moved around, and therefore, I don't think that they're, they're very effective for that. But uh, they could inflict a pretty nasty wound, so don't let me uh, underestimate, or, or un under, um, wow, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know, somebody emailed it to me real quick. I'll wait. Okay, nobody emailed. So they're not as efficient and they're not as powerful, but I don't wanna make them sound like they're incredibly weak. They are very strong, but they're just not strong enough in a fight, I don't think. So Spinosaurus, much too big of a dinosaur for Suchomimus. I think he would have ripped him to shreds. I think those powerful arms would have been effective. And I think Spinosaurus has an advantage simply because of his size. Your second question is, um, could Spinosaurus actually swim like they showed in Jurassic Park 3? Uh, hope to hear from you soon. Peace out, DG. Love you. Thank you, Brandon. It's very nice of you. Could he swim? No, he couldn't swim like they showed in Jurassic Park where his body was submerged and all you see is that sail. It kind of looked like the fin of a shark. That was all done, in my opinion, strictly for Hollywood. If that dinosaur could swim, and chances are he probably could, he probably did the doggy paddle, and I think most of that sail would be underwater when he was swimming. Uh, I think his head would have been uh, at the top, but I think most of his body would have been semi-submerged, um, unless, of course, he filled up those massive lungs with air and maybe allowed him to float, but still, you would see his head. If he was swimming the way that they showed in Jurassic Park, he wasn't swimming. He would have been crawling across the floor of the river and only that sail would have been exposed. And I just don't think that's a uh, uh, logical way for an animal like that to move. It's not very efficient. I really think it was done more for Hollywood. All right, everybody, thank you so much for writing to me. If you've got a question, go to my website ask, and click on the Ask Dinosaur George page while you're there. Uh, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I always love hearing from people on Facebook. And um, until next time, take care of yourself and take care of the people around you. And uh, for all you young people out there, always practice your reading because that is incredibly important. I'll see you guys soon. Take care.